my dear students assalamu alaikum welcome to your online class in this video i'm going to discuss about bain bridge reflex and i'm also going to talk about some of the short notes from your written from the cardiovascular system so let's start with resting vagal tone we know that our heart rate is controlled by the autonomic nervous system sympathetic system increases heart rate and parasympathetic system decreases heart rate under resting condition the parasympathetic predominates and keeps the heart rate slow this is known as resting vagal tone now bain bridge reflex is one of the reflexes that regulate our heart rate by definition we can say that increase in heart rate due to an increase in the right atrial pressure is known as the bain bridge reflex so when there is increased blood volume and the central venous pressure is increased then there are some receptors in the walls of the right atrium and these receptors send afferent signals to the Uh, cardio accelerator center of our brain that increases the sympathetic activity so uh, if you see that this is the superior vena cava and this is the inferior vena cava and when there is increased blood volume and increased venous return then there is increased in blood in the right atrium and then the receptors in the walls of the right atrium they are stimulated and they send signals to the Uh, cardiac center and that increases heart rate now let's see the mechanism when there is venous engorgement of the right atrium in muscular exercise deep inspiration or congestive cardiac failure then stimulation of the stretch receptors in the atria afferent impulse pass to the cardio accelerator center and we know that the cardio accelerator center is connected with the sympathetic nerves so they stimulate the sympathetic nerves and reflexly inhibit the parasympathetic that is the vagus nerve is inhibited and sympathetic nerve is stimulated so when sympathetic nerve is stimulated that increase the heart rate and this reflex is known as bain bridge reflex it is also known as atrial reflex so what is the importance of this reflex it prevents damming of the blood in the veins in the right atrium and in the pulmonary circulation so there is no accumulation of blood in this uh, right side of the heart and that is prevented by the bain bridge reflex next i would like to talk about uh, the junctional tissues of the heart you already know that uh, we have the sa node the internodal pathways the anterior intermediate and posterior internodal pathways then the av node then the bundle of his and right and left branches of the bundle of his and the parkinji fibers sometimes in viva you are asked that how the left atrium receives the impulse you can see that a branch from the sa node is coming to the left atrium and this uh, by this branch left atrium receives the impulse from the sa node and this is known as the batchman's bundle so uh, this is important for viva next why sa node is called the pacemaker of the heart there are four points and you have to mention all the four points so uh, i know you have gone through this so i'm just reviewing all these small points from the cardiovascular system the first point is it generates impulse at first at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute and it generates impulse most rapidly so it generates impulse first it generates impulse most rapidly and a new impulse is always generated from the sa node sa node is our natural pacemaker and it maintains the normal cardiac rhythm so these four points you have to mention to the uh, to answer the question why sa node is called the pacemaker of the heart 
then we have reserve pacemaker when sa node is not functioning properly or when sa node fails to generate the impulse then av node become the pacemaker and produces impulse at a rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute so av node is called the reserve pacemaker and then another point is ectopic pacemaker SA node is our natural pacemaker. Any site other than SA node is called ectopic pacemaker. And this can occur in the AV node or in the Purkinje fiber. In this figure, we can look at the foci which may act as ectopic pacemaker. It can be the AV node, it can be the ventricular foci or it can be the Purkinje fibers. Next, I am going to discuss about AV nodal delay. This is very important and the delay in the conduction of cardiac impulse in the AV node is called AV nodal delay. We know the impulse generates from the SA node, it goes through the internodal pathways to the AV node and there is a delay in the AV node and this delay is known as the AV nodal delay and it is about 0.09 second. You see this structure of the AV node, these are the uh, internodal th pathways through which the impulse is coming from the SA node. Then we have the transitional fibers, this is the AV node and this is the fibrous tissue that separates the atria and the ventricle. So this is the atrioventricular fibrous tissue and AV node penetrates through this fibrous tissue and then it enters the ventricles. So there is a delay in the AV node and the impulse uh, comes from SA node and the delay occurs here. So why there is the delay? Because short junctional fibers in the AV node resting membrane potential is more negative so if resting membrane potential is more negative it takes more time to reach the threshold level presence of very few gap junctions we know that there are gap junctions in the cardiac muscle and for this gap junctions cardiac muscle uh, impulse transmits very fast and cardiac muscle acts as a syncytium that means the whole cardiac muscle contracts as a single unit but in the AV node there are very few gap junctions so the impulse cannot travel so fast and there is a delay and there is a prolonged refractory period so four points why mm, that are responsible for the AV nodal delay now what is the importance of this delay for this delay it allows complete atrial contraction before ventricular contraction begins so there is complete atrial contraction and all the blood in both the atria in the from in the right atrium uh, it goes to the right ventricle and from the left atrium it goes to the left ventricle so if there is complete atrial contraction then the whole blood can go into the ventricle and there is proper filling of the ventricle and it allows sufficient time for ventricular filling so this is the importance of the av nodal delay next uh, i'm going to talk about you know the ecg ECG here you have the P wave and the QRS complex and the T wave and we have a PR interval. This PR interval actually represents the AV nodal delay. So it is the interval between the onset of the P wave and the onset of the QRS complex and it is 0 0.13 to 0 0.16 second. So what is the importance of this PR interval? It measures the conduction time from SA node to the ventricles. Normally it is 0 0.13 to 16 second and should not exceed 0 0.20 second. A longer interval indicates impaired conduction through the bundle. So this PR interval actually indicates the conduction time from conduction time of the impulse from the SA node to the ventricles. So if we see that PR interval is longer it indicates that conduction is delayed and if we see that PR interval is variable 
variable means it varies from bit to bit so peer interval if it is variable it indicates AV dissociation that means atrioventricular dissociation that means atria and when atria is contracting on its own pace and ventricle is contracting on its own pace and there is no association between them so it is atrioventricular dissociation so PR interval is very important it measures the conduction time from SNO to the ventricle if it is longer it indicates that there is a delay in the conduction and if it varies then it indicates that there is atrioventricular dissociation now uh, next I'm going to talk about ventricular scape and Stokes Adams syndrome when there is complete heart block you know the third degree heart block when there is complete heart block that means no impulse is traveling from the atria to the ventricle so atria is contracting at the pace of the SA node and an pacemaker generates in the ventricles and ventricles are contracting at the rate of that pacemaker so when there is complete atrioventricular dissociation complete heart block impulse does not pass from atria to the ventricle ventricles first what happens is ventricles stop beating for 5 to 20 seconds so first is the atria is not uh, atria is contracting at the pace of the SA node and ventricles are not receiving that impulse so ventricles stop beating for 5 to 20 seconds then the Purkinje fibers act as pacemaker for the ventricles and begin to rate at a rate of 15 to 40 beats per minute that is a slower rate so uh, there is complete atrioventricular dissociation hmm, there is no association between the atria and the ventricle the atria beat at the rate of the SA node and ventricles beat at a slower rate and this is called ventricular scape why scape this means the ventricles are break free from the control of the atria so ventricles are beating at their own they are free from the control of the atria that is why it is called ventricular scape and what this causes is the patholo the clinical condition that occurs in us is that there is cerebral ischemia and causes dizziness and fainting you see when the ventricles stop beating for 5 to 20 seconds there is no cardiac output and one of the vital organs is brain and brain is not receiving the oxygenated blood so there is cerebral ischemia and it causes dizziness and fainting and this condition is known as Stokes Adams syndrome see when uh, atria is beating at its own pace and ventricle is beating at its own pace there is atrioventricular dissociation and the vital organs are not like the brain are not receiving the proper amount of oxygenated blood so there is dizziness and syncope and this is known as the Stokes Adams syndrome so this is all for today uh, I hope this video will be useful for you. So stay safe and stay connected. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.